public speaking. It's important. Rhetoric is important. But so is economics and government and history and science. 2020 is kind of like that. I view 2020 as us living in 1918. We're dealing with the same issues of 1918 and just different, you know, the 1920s, 1930s is almost like the same history and problems we're facing in the 2020s and the 2030s and the 20 teens. So, uh, what do I mean by that? Like, how do I expand upon that? Well, I understand earlier tonight I was on my YouTube and I, or a YouTube video. I saw a YouTube video by Jordan Peterson, one of his lectures. And he's kind of like, he knows a lot about Hitler. It's kind of odd. It's a little weird. But it did spark a little like question I had. And sure enough, the New York Federal Reserve Bank solved this problem for me. Because they issued a report back in May, May 6th, about the 1918 pandemic influencing the rise of Nazis strengthening power in the 1932 and 1933 elections. Because the, I guess the psychology and the idea behind Nazism was uh, the belief it was biological based, right, in, in some regards, in which like white people or blonde hair, blue eyed German white people were superior biologically towards than other people. And everyone else uh, was disgusting and horrendous and needed to be put down and executed. It was a messed up belief system and totally horrendous psychology around biology, not based on like n sane, saneness, totally insane, uh, but nonetheless uh, based upon influenced by the massive loss of life that Germany had in the 1918 pandemic. 287,000 Germans died, uh, 500,000 Americans died, and Germany was a much, is a, then was a much smaller country than America then too. So uh, the point is 2020, what are we talking about? Well, white people has become like a code word that I see in the news a lot, which I'm, whenever the term white people gets sort of like tossed around, my spidey sense of like, uh, I don't like that, gets up a little bit. I mean, a few weeks ago, there was a bunch of Black Lives Matter protesters who were mostly white. In the streets of Los in Washington District Columbia, with their hands in the in the fist up, screaming at this lady, screaming, "White silence is violence," and she was just like trying to have dinner, and they were trying to force her to raise her hand in solidarity. I'm like, okay, you get a bunch of white people out in the streets screaming and yelling with their hands in the air. I don't care if it's in the Black Power salute. Anytime you get a bunch of white folks in the streets yelling and screaming with their hands in the air, I'm going to think of a bunch of white people in 1930s Germans with their hands in the air screaming and yelling. I'm sorry. I don't care. It's wacky. I don't care if it's from the left or it's from the right. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. My spidey sense is up. And I hope I'm not the only one that thinks that some of this stuff going on in 2020 is a little bit too uh, uh, off. Yeah, we're all in it together. Look, I'm just an individual person trying to deal with the 2020 COVID, you know, pandemic and this, you know, idiots in charge, both on the left and right, but the main idiot in charge out in Washington D.C., Trump, being an idiot president. And dealing with this election that's sort of an election, but not really like an election that's occurred in my life. That has nothing to do with me being white or black or Asian or Mexican or whatever, right? Like, I'm a white person that cooks Chinese food, Mexican food, black people. Like, I'm, I'm saying black people, people food with all due respect because black people food 
uh, is the best food America has. I mean, you go to New Orleans, like I've been in New Orleans, and you go, oh man, these French people met with these Caribbean people, and these like Nova Scotian like immigrants came over, and they created some like magical food and southernness that is unbelievable and unmatched anywhere else on the planet, and it's fantastic. That's what that's multicultural, like white people, black people, racist, non racist, having a fucking awesome cuisine. That's what I mean by like American multicultural awesomeness. And you didn't see any crazy New Orleans people, white or black or whoever, Asians. I mean, you can get pho, like awesome pho, Vietnamese pho, legit Vietnamese pho down there in New Orleans because out in Vietnam there's a bunch of shrimps guess what the Gulf has and down there in southern Louisiana a whole bunch of shrimps and they came over immigrated they opened up some fun restaurants and I'm telling you like it, you get yourself a shrimp po' boy for lunch and then a pho bowl for dinner and both are like the best you could get almost anywhere. That's a city that knows that fixes everything. Okay? Fixes everything. And this has become more basically me trying to talk about New Orleans because that's my happy place. But Jackson Square. You didn't see a bunch of crazy liberals trying to take down ja Andrew Jackson in Jackson Square in New Orleans a few months ago? Nah. Not at all. You saw that in the District of Columbia. Why? Well, you don't take down the statue of Andrew Jackson. This is one of those rules. And you don't see the Democratic Party just like getting rid of the mascot of the donkey. I mean, look, the liberals who are upset about the Redskins mascot and name, which is over and done with because they changed it to the Washington team. But all those people that were upset about it. I don't see them writing letters to the Democratic Party complaining about the origins of the donkey. Which were like from part of Andrew Jackson's like campaign like get that ass to the Washington DC. That's his campaign. And then the Democratic Party brought it back later and popularized it in the late 1800s. So like the people that like they could have like this the same people don't have any problem with the donkey being the mascot of the Democratic Party, but want to get rid of the Andrew Jackson <laughs> statue at Lafayette Square, right? Like, just like tear it down, all sort of like French revolutionaries or Bolsheviks, I don't know, right? Like, it's like a cognitive dissonance, and it's like you could have just like ignored what your liberal wacky professors said about like stuff. And just wrote a letter to like Tom Perez and been like, let's get rid of the donkey. Here's the history. It's racist. I don't like it. That's like, that would have been a more useful thing to do. And it would have been socially distanced and better for your health to just write a letter than like go out in the streets and cause a ruckus. <sighs> I went off topic there. I'm sorry. Not really, but it's my video. And I think I had a point. Somewhere in this. I don't know. I don't like 2020. I don't like government telling me how to live and what to do. But also, I didn't really do much to begin with, so it's not that big of a deal for me. Everyone else seems to be upset. I get that too. It's a free country. We should be able to do what we want. But stay alive, so stay home, do nothing, wear a mask. That's the position I find myself in this September of 2020, a few weeks before this election. It's probably not going to be a position I take in 2021 after I take the vaccine. But right now, that's my position, and I'm sticking to it until the new year, or when I get a vaccine. Or whichever one comes first or later. I don't know. Until 
uncomfortable not wearing a mask because I got vaccinated is when I'm gonna not change my position. All right, adios guys.